That's a nice bike. Okay, so why don't I walk through a quick example just to kind of show you the mechanics in practice, how might this work in a modern society? So let's talk about a TV thief. So I, I'm, you know, I live in a, a, su a suburb. I'm driving home and I see someone go going out of my apartment with a big TV on his back and he runs away. And so I go in, oh, my TV is gone. What do I do? I go and I check the, the video footage and it's, it's the, I think it's the kid that lives down the street. You know, it looks like him on the video. And so I could go and uh, present my kid. You know, I might just go to the person and, and say, hey, you took my TV, give it back. And the kid says, what are you talking about? I didn't do it. And so what do I do there? Now, I might, in, a, in an abstract sense, have the right ethically if, especially if I'm convinced, but suppose I look around and I think I see my TV in there, I might have the, the, the right to just barge in. And if it's, you know, I could probably take the kid, right? Especially if he's like, he's like 15 or younger. I bet you I get it. But I wouldn't do that. It would be foolish for me to do that because then if the kid's going around, especially if I have to rough him up, I'm going to look like a jerk. You know, if I think like it's a black eye or something, I'm going to look like maybe I aggress. The community's not going to know. So what do I do? is now one thing is moving into the suburb where we probably have signed stuff ahead of time saying disputes will be resolved as I'm trying to make it harder on myself. What if we didn't have that? What if I didn't have any sort of nexus of a pre-existing contractual framework to deal with this kind of dispute with this person? Maybe it's someone who lives several neighborhoods away and we, you know, there were no contractual arrangements between us. I would go to members of the community, judges who render opinions. That's what judges do, right? You notice judges don't, the language we use nowadays is we say the judge wrote an opinion. So what they're doing is they're saying, this is my interpretation, my understanding is how the law applies to these facts of the case. That's what judges are doing fundamentally. And so that's what I would do here is I would say, okay, you know what? I'm going to take all this evidence. I have the video footage, the serial number on my you know, TV that I went to Best Buy. I can get them to tell me what was it. And then he says, oh, well, the, the serial number on my TV has, has been scratched away. You know, because when I was bringing it in, I slipped and it rubbed against the wall. Sorry. You know, and so I, there's all kinds of circumstantial evidence like that. All the evidence I can amass, and I'll go to a bunch of judges in the community who all specialize in um, home, home uh, theft, right, burglary cases. And I'll, and I'll say, there's, here's 10 reputable judges in the community who all specialize. They have whole careers where all they do day in and day out is hear cases of people alleging this person broke into my house. So they're experts on this. The reason they're in business is because they have a reputation for fairness, right? Th that that's why they have that job. And if you've never thought about this, it might sound like science fiction or it wouldn't work, but this happens all the time. Like when people get divorced right now, unless it's a really expensive case and there's a lot of money at stake, usually they will just go to private arbitration just to get it over with, right? Just to hurry. You just want to move on with your life or, you know, a company and the employee have a dispute over the labor contract. The, the employee got sick and says, you owe me more time. The company says, no, we, we don't owe you that, those wages. The, the, the regular government court system is so clogged and inefficient, they will often go to mediation. And often, too, the, you know, the labor contracts ahead of time say any disputes will be submitted to binding arbitration. So how do those companies right now in the real world, this isn't something like that's out of Chapter 8 from Rothbard. This is in the real world. There are arbitrators in business. That's their livelihood. They clearly, it can't be known if you're a divorce arbitrator, you always rule for the wife or the husband. Otherwise, you would stop getting cases because the one party wouldn't agree to go to that person. You see what I'm saying? So all they're doing is rendering an opinion. So here I would be saying to this teenager that I thought stole my TV or his parents, okay, I'm willing to pick, here's a list of 10 people in the community. I'm willing to go to any of them to submit this case and I will abide by the, the judge's decision. If the judge says well, there's not enough evidence to prove that's my TV, okay, I tried, I'll walk away. And suppose that, you know, so the teenager can agree to it, in which case it's fine, we do that, or the, the, he'll just keep saying, no, no, I don't trust those guys. And what if he says, I'll hear, with this guy over here, it was my brother-in-law. You know, I'll take the case to him. The community then at that point would realize, okay, this kid is being shady. And right. And so what I would do in that case is I would go to a respected member of the community, submit my <laughs> evidence. He renders an opinion. Okay. And so Napata looks at the evidence. So obviously I'm using this to be funny. Clearly what I would do in the real world is pick some judge who doesn't know who I am, obviously. But, and so the community would see, okay, yeah, Murphy took his case to a reputable judge who's an expert in this area. The judge said, my understanding of the law, yep, this person is the thief. And then the sentences or the, or the restitution is return the TV plus 
whatever, 10 ounces of gold in restitution or whatever, an ounce of gold for, for Murphy's time in trouble. So that would be this outstanding judgment. Now, how would that get enforced? Now here, I would, now I would be legally in the right. The community would not object if I personally knocked on the kid's door and then went to go in and take my TV and, or even, and, maybe, and maybe if the kid used a standard checking you know, bank account, maybe the bank would transfer the money you know, in terms of the compensation because the bank wants to also be in compliance with the law. The community wouldn't want to think this is a bank where criminals go to hide their ill-gotten gains and the bank doesn't care about legal opinions that are, you know, are not being disputed by the reputable legal community. Okay, so again, if, if the kid showed up in court and challenged it, there could be an appeal process and so on. What I'm talking about here is suppose... Napolitano makes his ruling, and the kid just says, ah, he's a fraud, I don't care, and he's not going through normal legal channels to appeal it, such that any normal legal scholar would look at this in two minutes and say, yeah, it looks like Murphy's TV got stolen by that kid, if you ask me. So th I'm, this is the stage where we are. So here, I could now go into the kid's house and take the TV back with force, and the community wouldn't think I was a criminal. But I probably wouldn't, just for reasons of comparative advantage and so on. I would outsource it to somebody whose firm specializes in like property recovery, right? So somebody else would come in, that that's what that person's job is. Somebody who specializes in the use of violence. Okay, so <laughs> now notice even here, think, let's think this through. Okay, so I'm, I'm just trying to get you to see there's no one group that's in charge of the law here. I picked Napolitano, but there are 10 competing judges who are all experts that I could have picked and said. It's not that Andrew Napolitano is in charge of who gets TVs in this certain jurisdiction. That's not the way it works. He's just someone who's called upon to render an opinion, just like if you're writing a term paper and you're not sure about, well, gee, the, the professor wanted me to use the Chicago style manual to cite, you know, in the work cited section, there's different, you know, you could go Google it. There's lots of websites where you could go look that stuff up. It's not that there's one website in charge of here's how you cite papers. Okay, so same thing here. The law is what the community through its actions collectively promulgates, just like we all, in a sense, determine English language or diction, uh, definitions, but you just go to look for an authoritative style guide or source to codify that. Okay, likewise, it's not that Tom DiLorenzo's agency is the monopoly enforcement agency in the community. They're, they're one of several competing ones. If I went to him before I got the judicial ruling and said, hey, this kid stole my TV, here's the video, DiLorenzo's firm would say, whoa, we don't, we don't do that. You have to go get a ruling from a reputable judge first before we enforce that. We're not in the business of legal decisions. All we do is enforce just legal opinions. You, you, so you see that difference? So this is something that I think even in the standard libertarian uh, tradition doesn't get emphasized too much. I think in practice, the judges would be their own separate thing and the enforcement agencies would be completely separate entity. They would not just all be working like for the same insurance company the way you see it in some of the more canonical expositions. Maybe they would. I'm just saying, to me, those things are so intrinsically different, I don't see why they would happen to be the same agencies. I think the, the insurance company might you know, have contracts with them to, to outsource that stuff so there's no confusion once something, once a case is pending, to know, okay, where are we, who are we going to hire to take care of this? But I don't think it would be the same group of people. If for no other reason, you'd want to assure the community that there was no corruption involved. You'd want to have a hand's length, arm's length uh, distance between them. One more thing on this before I move on. Suppose DiLorenzo's agents are unnecessarily rough. You know, suppose they... they put like explosives, they blow the door, the, they burn the kid's house down, <laughs> they kill him and, and his dogs and stuff to get the TV back, he's going to go out of business. Maybe he's going to be legally protected, right? Maybe, depending on the legal code, maybe if they can argue in some sense that, oh, we, we were feared for our lives, okay, maybe, it depends on what the legal system is, probably not, depending on how egregious their overzealousness in, in getting that TV back would be. But for sure, no matter what, they're going out of business. Nobody else is hiring them again because I look bad, right? I don't want that. It's bad press for me, especially if I were a business, right? If you're a storekeeper and you're hiring private security just to, keep, to minimize shoplifting, you don't want teenagers bolting out of the store who just have like, you know, a radio or something or some candy bars under their jacket. You don't want them getting their arms broken by the security. That's, just, that's bad for business. And so what DiLorenzo's firm would actually do in this case is show up, you know, they might have like riot gear, you know, bulletproof vests and stuff to protect themselves, but they would not 
use lethal force to get a TV back. That would just be a bad business move. Okay, so and if they did, again, competition, they would go out of business. Whereas right now what happens when the police force is clearly overzealous in doing something, what happens is people put the video on Facebook or Twitter and, and there's outrage and the defenders say, oh, okay, well, the next time someone's breaking into your house, I guess you're not going to call 911, huh? The reason people think like that is because they think there's the police, period. Whereas if there's multiple competing agencies, then you would no longer think that. If one agency was clearly using excessive force, they go out of business. Just like right now, if somebody goes to a restaurant and gets food poisoning, and, and, and complains on Facebook, oh, I went there and I was thrown up for three days. People don't say, oh, well, the next time you're hungry, I guess you're just going to go to your backyard garden and grow it yourself, huh? <laughs> right? You know, I guess you, you like restaurants or not. You don't, it's not, do I like restaurants or not? It's that particular restaurant made me sick, all right?